It seems far-fetched, but farmers could soon be producing broccoli and cauliflower pills, one serve of vegetables in a tiny capsule. The idea of food in pill form has been around since the early days of science fiction. Here you are, boy, to wrap yourself around that. The roast beef was a little bit tough. <laughs> Just like hoverboards and flying cars are nearly a reality, a meal in a pill is no longer just science fiction. It's pretty big ask to say to someone here, just take this pill and it's a, you know, it's a broccoli pill. But, um, but in the future, who knows? I mean, if it's got other vitamins and minerals and perhaps other oils as well, and, and it, it serves a really good purpose for the, for, for the body, then by all means, let's develop that. It all starts here on the outskirts of Melbourne, in Werribee, which is known as the Salad Bowl of Victoria. Like most fruit and vegetable farms, not everything is harvested. Around 15% of these cauliflowers are simply left on the ground. 15% of anything is a lot, right? And when you grow the kind of quantities that we grow, it soon amounts up. How recently was this crop harvested? Sure, so we harvested this crop yesterday, Jess. Good example is right here. Not much wrong with this apart from a little bit out the side here, but it just won't be any good for retail. We've always thought about food waste, exactly, and we've always thought about yield, but we've never been able to truly get a market that, or, a, or a particular process that, that addresses that issue. The CSIRO runs a food innovation lab a few kilometres up the road from John's place. Scientists approached the grower a couple of years ago to see if they could use his vegetable waste. How did broccoli powder come about? Broccoli is one of the most uh, nutritious vegetables we have and it's very high in protein. Imagine 30% of broccoli is protein, you know, in dry basis. So we thought that's a good start, you know, to start developing uh, nutrient-dense vegetable products. The powder contains nearly all the same nutrients and health benefits as fresh broccoli. Broccoli latte? Yes, let's do it. Mm. So what's the nutritional value? So what we are trying to do is make coffee more healthier by adding broccoli powder in it. And while you're sipping away your coffee, you can have some of your snacks with a dip. With the muffin, you can replace the flour with the broccoli powder so that you get the nutritional content of the broccoli. The CSIRO is talking to a number of food companies to get these products onto supermarket shelves, which it hopes will happen in the next 12 months. In the meantime, it's conducted a widespread survey of farmers, processors and packers to find out how much is wasted and where. It found one and a half million tonnes of fruit and vegetables are lost before they get to retailers. The wine grape, potato, tomato, melon and apple industries have the highest wastage and most of it happens around prime horticultural areas. From the national map that we have done, we have identified key regions of the losses and the waste where that, that uh, Australia is generating in fruits and vegetables. So now uh, we, the idea is to locate and, and to co-locate and build facilities for processing where we can t turn this waste into ingredients. At Syro, we're revolutionising the supply chain by creating a food loss bank. Our food loss bank will form a decentralised network. Work is already underway in Gippsland in Victoria and Townsville in Queensland to start developing these facilities. This biomass will be taken to automated manufacturing hubs where it will be deconstructed into high value functional food ingredients. So is this futuristic or is it a realistic plan? I don't think this is futuristic. I think uh, this is happening now. There are, the business models are in place to make it happen soon. At Atuka in Northern Victoria, tomato and carrot processor Kagomi is already adding value to its carrot leftovers. It processes 18,000 tonnes of carrots every year but up to a quarter of that traditionally goes to waste. So in the carrot process, we're actually extracting uh, the juice um, and making a concentrate, a carrot concentrate. Uh, and then at the moment, the fibre is just going as a waste product. 
Fruit and vegetable processing factories like this one employ thousands of people across regional towns, but they're struggling, with rising costs like energy, transport and labour all putting pressure on the industry. A wave of innovation and investment into turning waste into vegetable products could hold the key to keeping this industry alive. Here we really don't have the options with rising costs. We really need to do something um, with our waste uh, and we need to do it quickly. The company has developed a product out of the carrot fibre, but believes the future is in nutraceuticals, a term coined in the 80s by mashing the words nutrition and pharmaceutical together. Currently we're supplying carrot fibre into some uh, meat manufacturers that are using for meat patties um, and going to uh, sausages and those types of things. We're actually taking some, uh, some prime beef out of the product. Um, and then we're also looking at uh, the nutraceutical market, but obviously that's a longer lead time uh, market to, to travel down. It's an idea John Saeed believes has a lot of potential. We're um, trialling as we speak, so we're doing things like encapsulating omega-3 oil into, into broccoli powder as we speak. Um, so the market will evolve, the nutraceutical market will certainly evolve. We're working with companies like Swiss and, and trying to understand you know, what customers or consumers would like. Local nutraceutical companies currently import ingredients for supplements, including grapes. The opportunity for products out of the Australian grape byproduct is immense. There is grape skin extract, grape seed extract, some of the whole fruit extract. There's a big opportunity there for very premium products that address very specific nutritional needs. As well as replacing imports, the nutraceutical industry is developing new products with local fruit and vegetable waste. One of the things that's attractive about the local ingredients potential is that it's really pan-Australia. It covers most of the states, most of the territories, all of them have specific areas that we could probably pioneer some great new extracts for the industry. It's unlikely appeal will fully replace traditional food for now, but there's no doubt what food is and how we consume it is changing. My dream is that we've got a salt and pepper shaker and a broccoli and cauliflower shaker right next to it, right? So that you can just, you know, two, three shakes and there's a serve of veg in any meal.